Double Bosch Cash. Hello, I'm Funny Stuff KR, and this is I'm I'm Kevin. And today we're going to be talking about ecology. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. This is gonna be me. It's because Kevin uh, is gonna be editing this whole thing. It's gonna take 14 hours. So, anyways, this video is supposed to be educational as well as entertaining. Yes, I did just mix fun with learning, but hey, it's possible. Just look at the vlog brothers. By the way, I'm gonna be following the rubric here, so uh, pardon me if the video gets a little bit choppy. So, anyways, I'm gonna start off by talking about what is ecology, giving some examples, following my rubric basically. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a few ways on how to help local ecological problems or just ecology or the environment as a whole as a little bonus actually that's not true it's not a little bonus it's actually uh, also part of the rubric how do organisms interact with other organisms and their environment so first of all there are lots of ways that organisms interact with each other and the environment but looking at ourselves for an example first of all is we will flee if we're on top of a volcano and we see lava very near us. But we will feel warm and safe under our blankie in our bed. And that would be the same as a hawk feeling safe with its young in its nest on top of the tree. But uh, if it's on the ground near a bunch of other animals that wants to kill it, we'll feel very threatened and we'll fly away or get eaten, you know, either one of those. And that was all environment examples. But if you're going for some other organisms, Let's look at this. If you're talking to someone at class or at work or at home and you're having a good time, you're gonna stay there. Obviously, you're not gonna just live and interrupt and be kind of a bad person or something, I don't know. But if a homeless man is running at you, acting all crazy, holding a knife, you're gonna run away. That's what's called the flight or flee response. Or like this, a fish sees a fish and they don't care. They, they go, fish, whatever. But if a fish sees a shark, oh my god, run away! Ah! I should actually do that more, what a fish would do. Oh my god, a shark, swim away! So basically, depending on the situation, organisms will act differently. So why do organisms interact with organisms and their environment? Why not? So first of all, all living things have eight things in common. All living things are made up of cells, reproduce, have a universal genetic code, grow and develop, obtain materials and energy, they respond to their environment, maintain homoestasis, and evolve. So most organisms do things in order to survive and live. An owl, for example, will look and hunt for mice in order to get its energy and live more. An owl will also hunt at night because it is a nocturnal creature and has better chances of catching one with its environmental advantage. However, we are a little bit more complicated because we are not like other organisms because we don't just take to survive, we take to survive and live, and live well. For example, on Thanksgiving dinner, we don't eat until we are just satisfied. I have enough energy to last for the next day. We eat till we're stuffed and we can't move anymore. As for some environmental examples, we separate the world into countries and states and cities and just very different sections, basically, sectioning the world and having an urban, suburban and rural areas. And all of that is environmental. We have made this change for ourselves. And that's why we do it, and it's much different from many other organisms. What happens to ecosystems as a result of those interactions? So most ecosystems will maintain a balance, but sometimes that can be thrown off by many different reasons. And that cause is extinction, when the predator of a certain animal gets too big of a population, or the animal's environment changes drastically, either by our actions or other actions of the environment itself, and then thus they cannot live there and they all die. It's, it's very sad. Don't think about it too much, please. Oh my God, we need a cuteness break. Cuteness break! <laughs> Are they so cute? Oh my God. Dogs. Hope you're not a cat person and you're hating on this. I mean, come on, they're cute. They're cute. Ah. 
it's, uh, it's nice watching them. Go ahead. Yeah. They're pretty, pretty cute. I know that's exactly what you thought right now. Okay, then that's enough cuteness. Let's keep going. So ecosystems will change because of those interactions. And especially for us, we have changed the ecosystem more than any animal in all of time. At least by our knowledge so far. I mean, <laughs> no one knows what the future could be or dogs taking over, giant ants like taking over or cats would be too cute and will take over the internet and they'll kill us all. I mean, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Meteor too, don't forget about that, but you know. So what is the relationship between biodiversity and humans? Biodiversity is the different types of animals in this world, like species of animals. That's what we speak of most, anyways. So at the distant past where no human was living yet, we had a bunch of animals and only one animal was extinct per millennium. Now this is a very good statistic, as I mentioned before, on how most ecosystems will keep a balance and only some of them will tip over. And that is a statistic of what happened millenniums ago. However, when we humans stepped in, that rate went up a thousand times higher than when we weren't here. So being the dominant species on Earth have significantly reduced the biodiversity. So our actions have been harmful to other organisms, that we cannot deny. But there is a way to decrease this problem, which I will mention at the end of the video. But anyways, one action that people still debate today is uh, how our gases from cars and different factories all cause our ozone layer to be weakened, and thus causing global warming. Although this theory is not yet proven, it is an example of how we do change the ecosystem and decrease biodiversity. One action that is definitely been proven and is still a problem now is cutting down the Amazon forest, which is causing several species to go extinct. And that was the problem when I was in third grade in Brazil. So, I mean, you can imagine how it's going now. But anyways, what are some long-term impacts in biodiversity that we cause? In very simple terms, we increase the rate in which biodiversity goes down, which means even more species will go down in the future. And that's a very bad thing because Earth has thrived in having so many diverse animals, plants, all kinds of organisms. That's the only big impact that we'll have long term uh, unless we decrease this rate, which I'll tell you soon. Don't worry about it. Short term impact would be a species going extinct now and you know, a slower rate because, I mean, something just won't die right now and it'll be extinct. They go endangered first and that's where we come in on what, how we can help. For example, in China, pandas are endangered and there's several facilities where they are trying to nurse them and bring their population back up. And that is one of the biggest things that you can do to keep the rate of biodiversity down, is to help not let these endangered species go extinct. And going to facilities is just one of example of what you can do. There are many other ways in which mainly you can just type on Google and I'm sure you'd find a way to how you can help. The other biggest thing is what you should do and what you can do is what everybody keeps telling you to do, all of those small things that you can do in life. That is all to help what impact we have and decrease that. And all those small things like brushing your teeth without the water on or recycling, all of those things help a lot. My impact and your impact may be small, but if no one starts, nothing will get better. You don't need to be perfect, but I do remember to throw my can of coke into the recycling bin. I take a short six minute shower and I listen to my mom when she tells me to turn the lights off because we are not using it. And that's energy we don't need. Now for the reflection part. I think I did a good job explaining what ecology is to you, what biodiversity is and how you can help. And also this was all me. I did all the research, I wrote the script. Uh, I made my set, which by the way, I have lighting and my background and camera, obviously HD. I'm the actor <laughs> in here. Kevin is also the one that edited this whole video, which took him a while, not gonna lie. The whole day on the weekend. Ah, uh, time you'll never get back. But it was all worth it. And you know, I think we can make a difference. I mean, this is just one video, but if you share it to your friends and family, maybe you would just take a reminder to help do all those little things or maybe even inspire someone to actually do a big action to help the environment. 
I mean, we could really make a difference. After all, if we don't take care of the environment, we wouldn't be here with it. And we won't be here in the future if you don't take care of it now. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and at least learned something out of it. And if you liked it, please press the like button. And again, if you want to help Earth or me, I mean, you have Earth and me, you know, whichever one you pick, you can also share to your friends and family. Side note, I'm going to be making more uh, vlogs. I'm going to start some book talk series, some more Minecraft videos. So look out for those things. And also, if you want to see all that, subscribe if you haven't already um, up here in the big yellow button. If you're on the computer, I mean, I know there's like the iPhone, there's like you have to go to more videos and like press subscribe way down. So I uh, can't really speak for everyone. But anyways, if you're on the computer, uh, big subscribe yellow button up there. Anyways, I'm funny stuff here. I hope you're having a nice day. See you later. Bye.